Hey, I'm Jessie, and welcome back to a brand new That's My Story throwback episode. Birthdays are usually a time to celebrate and have fun, right? But what if you got a present you really hated? Or you couldn't have a party because your parents were so embarrassing? Today's stories are all about wacky and life-changing celebrations that don't always have a happy ending. First up is a story about someone who can't even reveal their name as the story is so shocking. This person suffers from a psychological condition where she can't stop lying. She thought that if she told a small lie at a party to get some attention, everyone would soon forget it. Spoiler alert, they didn't. Let's watch and see what the lie was. My goal was to get all the attention and then enjoy the party. But then things took an unexpected turn. I didn't know that my friend's dad was a high-level policeman. He came home right away when he heard about what happened. He apologized to me several times. He said that it was unforgivable that a guest should experience such a thing. We went to the police station together. They took my statement. Then an artist came in and made a sketch based on my description. I regret not describing someone else. Like an idiot, I described the bald man who I thought followed me. A week later, my friend's dad came to our house and took me and my parents back to the police station. They had caught him. They took us into a room. We could see the man through a two-way mirror. Is this the man who robbed you? They asked. Yes, it really was the same guy. They said he got out of prison last year and has a record of similar crimes. He hasn't done anything since he got out, but these kinds of men never learn. Apparently, he went back to his old ways. The police were sure that they got the right guy. Wow, that escalated. Would you have told the truth when the police got involved? See if she confessed or not by watching the whole video. The link is in the description and iCards. Terios can totally relate to this story, as they also caused trouble with their friends and family when they couldn't stop lying. Scary McClary is the total opposite. Their mum says they actually tell the truth too much. Sisters Giselle and Dawn used to get on until their dad's business went under and they lost their mansion and other privileges. Giselle had sympathy for their dad's situation, but Dawn was ungrateful and blamed him. He promised her a car for her birthday, even though he couldn't afford it. Let's see the moment she gets given it and what her unbelievable reaction was. Finally, her birthday arrived. My mom woke up really early to prepare a beautiful breakfast. All around the house, she put little cards that said happy birthday. But Dawn didn't care about any of that. After getting up, the first thing she asked mom was, what kind of car did dad get me? I thought dad had gone to work, but it turned out he had gone out to bring the car he got for Dawn. He came in as we were having breakfast. Dawn jumped up saying, dad, where's my car? Dad gave her a little box with a smile on his face. (laughs) She knew the keys were inside. She wanted to see the make of the car as soon as possible. She tore open the wrapping paper. She was happy when she saw the Kia logo on the key. Did you get me an SUV? Not the brand I was dreaming of, but thanks anyway, she said. Then she hurried outside. And we went after her. Dawn started bawling as soon as she saw the car, because my dad didn't get her an SUV, but the smallest model Kia had. I thought it was a really cute car, but my sister did not think so. She turned to my dad. So this is what you think I deserve? What is this, a toy car, she asked. My dad was really upset. This was what I could afford. Drive this for now. We'll get you the car you want when we start doing better. But Dawn wasn't listening to him. Burning with rage, she started screaming at him. Dad, today is my birthday. Do you understand? My birthday. I wanted to be happy for just one day a year, but you couldn't even make that happen. How can you call yourself a father? I don't think you deserve to be called one. After she was finished, she threw the key at my dad and ran home. I'd never seen my dad so upset. He fell down to his knees. He held his head. My mom went to him. She held him. They stayed that way for some time. Then suddenly my dad got up. He picked up the car keys from the floor. He got into the car and quickly drove away without saying a word. My sister didn't leave her room until the evening. My mom and I were preparing dinner. Dawn came out with eyes bloodshot from crying. She looked surprised. She said dad called her to say, come outside. I have a big surprise for you. When we came outside, we couldn't believe our eyes. 
my dad was standing next to a brand new Porsche SUV. Dawn jumped into my dad's arms screaming with happiness. How would you have reacted if you were in Dawn's shoes? Or what would you do if you had a sibling that was as ungrateful as her? Watch the whole story to see the heartbreaking sacrifice their dad made to buy the car, which made Dawn see things from a different perspective. Bet M thinks that Dawn's dad taught her the best lesson ever, respect. And Mike thinks that we should appreciate everything given from the heart and not to be too demanding. Next up is Bree's story. Her dad remarried and her stepmom was never welcoming. When her dad unexpectedly went to jail, she made Bree leave school and get a job. After Bree ended up earning millions, her stepmom found the money and demanded to know what was going on. Let's watch the incredible way Bree managed to run away and hide from her stepmom. We went to an RV park all the way across the city. My friend and her dad got in a cab and went home. Yes, this was my friend's idea. I was going to live in their RV for a while. <laughs> I was feeling really good about myself because from now on, I could do whatever I wanted. I got rid of my old phone so that my stepmother wouldn't be able to reach me and got a new one. I had something important I had to do. I searched online for a lawyer and found one. I met him in his office the next day. I ended up hiring him to look into my dad's case. My stepmother wouldn't tell me where my father was being detained so that I wouldn't be able to visit him. So first off, the lawyer had to find out where my dad was. Then I went and bought a whole bunch of the ingredients I used to make the acne mask. I was going to convert the RV into a small lab. Meanwhile, the lawyer called. He found out which facility my dad was kept in. If you want to visit him, I can come and pick you up in an hour, he said. <laughs> I'd missed my dad so much. The second I saw him in his prison clothes, I started crying. The lawyer left us alone. I told my dad everything. He was so sad to hear what I'd gone through. He said, your stepmother never comes to visit me. I was so worried about you because I had no way of knowing how you were. I'm going to divorce her as soon as I leave this place and I'll be a better father to you. And he hugged me. Then we talked to the lawyer. He said that there wasn't enough evidence to keep my father in jail. Would you have liked to hide out in an RV all alone? Find out how Brie made her millions and the amazing moment her stepmom found out by watching the full video. Benjamin thinks that Brie is a hero and wants to give her a hug. Sydney is so glad that her dad listened to her about the evil stepmom, unlike the dad in our I Cried Diamond story. Uranium Leaf thinks that Brie's story is super inspiring. Glad you all enjoyed it. Our final story for today is about Anna, who is embarrassed by her parents. When she goes to a new school, she tries to hide them from her friends. She can't understand how they don't realise how embarrassing they are, especially when they took her to the cinema dressed as a fox and a chicken. Let's watch the moment Anna's estranged grandfather tells her the touching reason why her parents act the way they do. Grandpa started talking about the past for the first time. He had always dismissed that before, saying... It's much more important to deal with the future. You can shape that while the past stays the way it was. He began, When your mother was your age, she was a very shy girl. Your grandmother had died by the time your mother was two years old, so maybe that was the cause. Anyway, she was so shy that she never attended a ballet recital, even though she loved ballet and had ballet lessons for many years. Her teachers also complained because she never participated in class. I could not help her. It was only when she met your father that she decided to overcome her shyness, mainly because she wanted to become a mother who exemplified confident, free behavior one day. Your father had been raised by an uncle who died when your father was only 17 years old. He was completely on his own until he met your mother. The two were inseparable from the beginning. Your father wanted nothing so much as a family, just like your mother. Since then, he's worked tirelessly to make sure you're all okay. Do you know he works three different jobs, slaving from dawn to dusk? Yeah, something like that, I said, embarrassed. In the morning, he's out delivering packages of newspapers for the paper delivery people long before you wake up. Then he's back home for breakfast with you and dinner, too. During the day, he works as a plumber, and at night, he does additional emergency work for several other plumbing companies. I felt terribly guilty and suddenly felt nothing but arrogant and heartless. I didn't know all that, or only partly, I said, and I feel terrible. But my grandpa told me that neither he nor my parents would want that. Their intention had always been to give me as carefree and beautiful life as possible. 
And I realized that that was exactly what I had. A carefree, untroubled childhood and youth in which my parents made everything possible for me that was in their power. I was suddenly proud of my parents and asked my grandfather not to tell them about our conversation. The next morning, I woke up and heard rumbling in the house. When I came downstairs, there was the most amazing racing bike I had ever seen with a huge red bow on it. Happy birthday, my parents shouted. I had wanted a racing bike so I wouldn't have to take the bus anymore, but I hadn't imagined it would be this great. I was overwhelmed. Immediately, I remembered that it had always been like this. My parents fulfilled my wishes and regularly exceeded my expectations. Grandpa gave me the matching bicycle helmet. He winked at me and looked at my parents with pride. When we sat together at the table in the afternoon, I said, This is a wonderful birthday with great presents. But in the future, I don't want such great gifts. I want to learn to work out and fulfill wishes myself. I'm going to take a job or a vacation job and start saving for my next big wish. But then what about our vacations? My father asked. We'll just do that every other year and maybe only for a week. I'd rather you didn't work so much anymore, Pa. My mother then said, Okay, if you grow up like this now, then I can work more again. I would like that. I was really sad when my grandpa drove away again. We had never been that close before. Do you think Anna's parents are embarrassing? Watch the whole video to see what other things they get up to, and what happened to her grandfather. K-pop texting thinks Anna is lucky to have such fun parents, as some are really serious all the time. M Magic Sisters Go would be happy to have Anna's parents, and Jenna thinks they're fun and awesome. Thanks as always for sharing your thoughts. Please keep commenting and letting us know what you think of the stories. I love reading them. If you want to watch any of today's videos in full, the links are all in the description and iCards. Remember to subscribe so that you never miss out on a new upload. Those were our stories. Thanks for watching.